welcome back everyone to another backwards compatibility video this time covering the Master Chief well not really Halo Reach nope there's no Master Chief to be found in our second analysis video of the Xbox One's expanding list of Xbox 360 titles now playable on the machine and now you won't have to reach far to enjoy more Halo action <laughs> <clears throat> Bungie's swan song from both Microsoft Fold and the franchise as a whole was a real gem of a game. Taking the saga into the popular at the time prequel set before Reach Falls, you get the chance to live the legend first hand. After such a long collection of games on the 360, the team had become far more versed with its architecture and the engine was far more impressive here, with better use of post effects, cinematography, animation, even if the grey-brown colour corrected palette can deliver some washed out textures and look at points. It can still deliver some great views and frantic action in play. The 360 release was a pretty good performer in the most part, handing in a very solid 30 tick rate across the cinematics exploration along with a pretty good streaming system. The same engine signs are clear here even from the most recent Halo 5 release, but here with much less hardware to work with, we are presented with a near native 1280x720 resolution. Only upscale is the horizontal from an 1152, but near as damn it. Great use of HDR bloom, saturation and many dynamic lights mixed with the series trademark alpha effects really delivers here. And this is the limit at times as in conjunction with its mass AI work and increasing hordes, it can put a strain on both the Xenon CPU and Xenos GPU. This means with its double buffered render if the frame allocation misses more than a little, it can drop to a sustained 20fps update. It does run an adaptive v-sync to allow the top section to tear if slightly over over budget and in action is hard to spot and helps keep the frame rate from tanking too low or too long at times. But it does happen in heavier GPU cinematics or action and along with some longer hangs from IO saving or loading, once you get into the meat of the game it sticks at or close to its target most of the time with its average rate of 29.5 delivering 90% of its target over a 5 minute spread of all key areas. With just over 340 torn frames, adding from my like for light -like tests across platforms. The biggest issue for the drops does appear to stem more from its heavy CPU use in both AI scripting and physics than any real GPU load, although this is not always the case. And here with the new X1 emulator in action we see that not even the Master Chief himself can solve some of the issues here. The first thing off the bat is the emulator game now presents frame pacing issues not present when we're on a 360 machine. As my frame time graph shows even though it can hit 30 frames over a thousand millisecond run the order and delivery is not flat with its yo-yo delivery making it feel as if it's dropping frames at times when it is in fact flipping between a 16 and 50 millisecond delivery. This means that it hits the higher frame time more often than the 360 and due to the delay in delivering its frames it is allowed to flip its buffer to attempt to mask its dip. But it also suffers from actual dips. Take a look at my Mass Effect video to explain more on this full V-Sync solution that is in effect on Mass across all backward titles. Subtle, huh? Meaning now even the smallest tear that only affected the top section of the screen now results in a full held frame for another 16 milliseconds at best. And following this logical flow to its conclusion means that in general where the 360 dipped or tore, the X1 version dips also just to a higher degree. Now due to the original game's heavy CPU resource causing frame spikes, with the X1 having to handle even more overhead from its VM in addition to the game, it has an even harder time to hit its target, when these are the majority of the game's reasons for missing its budget. Throw in the V-Sync and its pacing issues that it is a game that feels and performs much worse than its original target hardware. And even though it is not as bad a performer on either machine as my last game in Mass Effect, it does fall a decent level behind the 360 release as shown by the on-screen metrics. My gut feeling is the emulator may need to allow some adaptive tearing to try and alleviate these issues as a good portion of games use this method or no V-Sync at all. But also as each title will need levels of changes to each VM on a per title basis, with Reach it needs to solve the pacing issues which are far more prevalent and interfere with the game's controls, more so than the sum of its dips. I will have more games to cover soon so please stay tuned and enjoy a few more minutes to give you a clear view of both titles. As always I hope you guys and girls enjoyed this, if you did please hit that like and subscribe button as it really helps support me and I appreciate each and every one of you that does. Leave your thoughts and your feedback below and I'll see you very soon on the next one.
I'm under fire! The more the merrier. Noble leader, I'm seeing heat sinks in the structure ahead. Thank <laughs> you. 